Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. I'm here with Vander, and we're going to talk about druid subclasses in Natasha's Cauldron of Everything. Hey, guys. Uh, just to introduce some of the new features. First, a bunch of new spells from 1st to 8th. Uh, I'm not going to go over all of them, but uh, some fun summon ones, just with, especially with all the new spells that came out for summoning beasts. Uh, druid gets a bunch of them, and that's a lot of fun. Um, there is a second... Uh, level druid feature called wild companion which you can take a wild shape and use that for a find familiar spell instead and you can keep the creature around for up to half your druid level so uh first few levels probably not super useful because it's only around for an hour or two but once you get up there it could be helpful having that little familiar fly around for you or run around for you uh, fourth level, and then every ASI afterwards, you have cantrip versatility. Basically, just switching out a cantrip when you find one that's not useful. You know, sometimes you really love druid craft because it's super druidy, but then you're like, wow, this is actually kind of useless. But who knows? All depends on your setting. Um, but we're going to be talking about the Circle of Spores, Circle of Stars, and Circle of Wildfire. Uh, Manny, if you want to go into Circle of Spores a bit. Circle of Spores is pretty much the closest thing druids have to necromancy in my opinion um it's uh but it's 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 but it, but i really like how um the dragon is trying to break the the uh i guess the stereotypes of classes you know with, with barbarian we saw uh, uh, uh the path of wild magic and with uh druids i'm looking at the circle of spores and they're very different take on on druids where they focus more on pretty much on death or spores uh, fungus and things like that um so halo of spores is really cool you don't have to uh cast it it's always there uh if a creature comes within 10 feet of you uh they have to make a safe throw or take uh some necrotic damage i think that's really fantastic sixth level you get fungal infestation which you can animate a corpse so it's it's not a zombie per se it's a it, it it does have a zombie. It, it was considered to have a zombie stat block, but it's actually more of a it's a it's a fungus creature that's inhabiting it, that's making it alive, which is I, I think from a role play perspective, that's a really interesting thing. Um, what, what did you like about it? Um, so the fungal infestation ability is fantastic, um, but the the cool thing about it is that. Uh, actually, I think symbiotic entity is great. Uh, the second level thing. Uh, the all these new um, druid class, subclasses have a different way to use wild shape, which is really awesome. So, uh, uh, Circle of Spores has symbiotic entity. Uh, if you watch not another D and D podcast, you've probably already heard about this. Uh, but it lets you replace your wild shape with uh, becoming a fungal entity of some form. Uh, which means your halo of spores damage is increased and your melee damage also does additional necrotic damage as well uh, it lasts for only 10 minutes but you also get some additional hp which is always nice some temporary hit points um and then uh spreading spores also great uh i'm i like uh circle of spores but i'm not like the biggest fan ever but i really liked uh fungal body uh, you basically get immunity to being blinded, deafened, frightened. Basically, most, not every, but a lot of the weird conditions that you can uh, get under, but also critical hits on you turn into normal hits. So, like, if some big bad's about to real kill, really kill you with a Vorpal Blade or something, you know, it's not, it doesn't happen anymore. You don't get your head chopped off. It's nice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a really interesting subclass. Um, the Circle of Stars, um, another really interesting uh, out of the norm for druids. Um, instead of becoming a beast or a fungus, as we've talked about before, uh, this one deals with constellations. Um, so at second level, um, you get the Circle of Stars feature where you become a, 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 like if you ever watch. Uh, if you ever read Marvel Comics, the, the character Eternity, where it's a, it's a being where you look inside him, you see nothing but stars and constellations. Your body just transforms into as if you're the, the night sky with stars within. And you could choose three um, constellations. Uh, you could be the archer, uh, you could be the uh, chalice or the dragon. Uh, the archer gives you a better range abilities uh, for attacking. Chalice helps with healing and uh, dragon helps with um, um, uh, saving throws. So you get um, 
uh, when it comes to wisdom checks and constitution saving throw checks, uh, you can always treat uh, a roll. Nothing will get lower than a 10 in that in that case. Um, what did you like about it? Well, we also get the star map at second level as well, which is great because you get the guidance cantrip, you get guiding bolt. Basically, you just have that on all the time and you can use it once uh, once a day for free. And there's a lot of different versions of star maps. You can obviously make your own, but they have some suggested ones like a um, stone tablet that has holes drilled into it. There's a crystal that projects the starry patterns and the, just the different flavors you could have with this. Like there's some good ideas here, but you could make up one for yourself and uh, make it really interesting. Um, obviously at, uh, not obviously, but at uh, sixth level, you get Cosmic Omen, which uh, lets you basically do like a flip of either wheel or woe. Um, and whenever someone is doing an ability check when you have wheel or ability check saving throw or attack roll you can basically give inspiration uh and add a d6 to that um or well where you subtract a d6 from a saving throw attack roll ability check of some sort and you can use that as many times as your proficiency score which is yeah. always nice and then afterwards, um, the, the last two, Twinkling Constellation and Full of Stars, 10th level and 14th level, pretty much um, just makes your, your previous uh, Circle of Stars features just more powerful. Um, your, and for Twinkling Constellations, your story form improves. You get a, a, a more damage for your Archer, more healing for Chalice. And um, your, when you have your, drag, when your Dragon feature is active, you have flying speed and can hover. Uh, and Full of Stars, I really like a lot, just because it just sounds really cool that your story form, um, you become partially incorporeal. So you, your resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. And I think that's just amazing. I really, see, that's the only issue I have is Full of Stars, because they had the ability to say if you're incorporeal, you could pass through things and get like a couple other small, like, benefits that like realistically don't change gameplay too much but have those little advantages that are super helpful like uh you have dark vision out to 300 feet just because you know you're part of the starry sky now or being incorporeal and being able to pass through things i really would have liked to see a little more on that capstone uh to be honest um everything else i think is great and i think it's really versatile but for that ending like when you compare it to like I don't know uh, what we're about to talk to with wildfire. I think their capstone just happens to be better, but mm -hmm. to each their own. Yeah. Circle of wildfire at, at first, I would not sure if I would like it. I still have trouble understanding it when it comes to like role playing. So to me, the idea of using druids using fire to heal it, to me, is like, to me at first I was like, okay, what, what's going on here? But if you think of the Phoenix, uh, if you think of, uh, of nature of using fire to heal itself at times, um, it, totally makes sense. Uh, so the really interesting thing about uh, Circle Wildfire is that you have a, 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 a fire-shaped companion, a, a beast of some sort, a wildfire spirit, you know, and you can choose of what the spirit could look like. It could look like a fox, uh, a dog, a cat. Um, it has this as a stat block for it for, uh, for, your, for your game master. What did you think of this? I enjoyed it. I think there are certain things that like they could have done better uh, just because, you know, we had Phoenix Sorcerer, which was like a really awesome fire based uh, spellcaster. Um, I think this is obviously very different. Like it, they both have the healing notions of fire versus just going the full evocation blaster, um, even though you still have some of that here. Um, but I think having the wildfire spirit is nice. I, I don't like that it takes a, um, a wild shape. Uh, because in addition to the wild uh, companion that you can potentially have, like everything is taking up your wild shapes and like you only start with two of those. So like it really runs your options ragged really quick with all with honestly all of these. Um, but what I, I do like the wildfire spirit, um, I, I like having that stat block that I can work onto like a flying creature or a running creature or whatever type. Um, I will say my favorite thing is definitely the uh, capstone for 14th level, Blazing Revival. Um, so if you're about to hit zero health, uh, your um, fire spirit can, your wildfire spirit can 
go to zero health and steady you and you go to half your hit points and it does again go more to that phoenix vibe but in general that idea of like purging and healing of fire uh, i like a lot um, yeah uh cauterizing cauterizing flames um it's an interesting ability to get a 10th level um where uh, you have a uh, 30 feet around you you could choose that your these harmless spectral flames can um can heal or do damage um 2d10 plus your wisdom modifier um and you can use this reaction a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus um it's it's interesting you know uh, it, it, for me it's a little bit different different way of thinking but it's to me it's not terrible yeah so it's my main issue with cauterizing flames is that it says uh when when a creature you can see that enters that space and i don't know if it means that five foot cube that something died or if it means the 30 foot uh radius that it says the creature has to be in with you if it means that five foot cube or even 10 foot cube that's not a lot of space to just have like this little bomb of fire to either help or heal for healing it's great because you can be like hey go over there and you can heal but like the chances of an enemy just running onto a thing of fire is just really not likely uh, <laughs> but I, I guess using it for like a, a little healing bomb is healing bouncing betty i guess it's nice yeah so uh viewers um uh what did you think of this uh subclass did you like it what would you change about it um let us know in the comments below and please like and subscribe support the channel and uh, be safe out there have a good day